Hiya, Hannah. There we go, just checking that we're sorted. Yes, we are sorted. Fantastic. Oh, get myself sat down and comfortable now. Welcome, everybody. So far, I'm seeing a comment from Hannah, so I'm just glaring at my iPad, willing it to carry on. Oh, that's better. Hi, Yana. Hi, Julie. Hello, Annie. I think I saw Maggie in the background as well. How are we, everyone? Barbara. Hello, Barbara and Andrea. So, I've done a bit more work on this since the last time we met. Hiya, Palmy. Let me just get my sharpener out of the way. So I'm trying to figure out which area of this to do first because some of this is going to be um, wet at different times. So I'm thinking we'll do the door last, we'll probably do the duck last. So let's do the lantern and the cat and then we'll go on to these flowers here. Hi Elise, hi Angela. So let me just get zoomed in. And we'll have a little look at this area. Hiya, Christian. Ah, Maggie is here. I thought I'd seen you sneak in, Maggie. Hopefully um, we won't have any lags and things on the video today. I know it was a little bit problematic the last time we met for, for various people. Okie dokie dokie. So I've decided to go for um, like a, a black and grey cat here just to give it some contrast. But I'm going to do this um, lantern here first. So I'm going to go straight in with some Prismacolor. So some Deco Yellow. And Liz is here as well. Hiya Liz. And some Salmon Pink as well. And then I will probably pop just the smallest little bit of lavender on as well because of course we've got that curtain behind. Oh, Christy is here as well. Long time no see. How are you? Beautiful calligraphy, by the way. I was checking that out on Instagram earlier on. Bravo. Right, what for done with my makeup brush? Let's just get rid of all these bits and bobs. So I do hope everybody's had a good week. I can't believe it's nearly over. The time is just flying. So a bit of deco yellow. I'm going to um, put that in all over the flame. Most of the most of this triangle that's left, actually, I'm going to put this over. So we just dragged a little bit of the black pigment into the yellow. Need to be a little bit more careful with that, Suzanne. Let's just erase a bit of that away. There we go. Try that again. Take two. Use a lit. In fact, I'm just going to check the edge of my nib isn't still covered in uh, in black which it isn't so I'm just being a little bit more careful I forgot that I'd edged this I should have done it last hi Josephine and Sandra hi Jeanette happy Sunday everyone so a nice light coat of this deco yellow over the top and then I'm just going to warm it through with a little bit of this salmon pink so I finished the other page in this book as well um, that I was working on. I finished it about half an hour ago. So I'm thinking of new ideas for the next page and I'm toying with the idea of doing um, another live over in the usual group and maybe doing something in Magical Jungle or Worlds of Wonder. So we'll see what everybody fancies. So just a little smidge of lavender just because we've got this curtain behind. In fact, I need my glasses because I kind of see what I'm doing. There we go, that's better. So I'm not pressing very hard with this. I just want to put a little hint of this sort of purpley pink behind this flame because, of course, we've got the, the curtain behind this one, whereas we had the wall behind the one on the other side. So to do the lantern on the other side, I've only just followed the steps you've seen a minute ago, minus this lavender colour, we've just got some deco yellow and some salmon pink going on in the background. Which pencils do I use the most? Depends what I'm in the mood for 
um, Barbara. I tend to use, I will always default back to my Prismacolor, always. But I do enjoy using other brands as well. I'm very much liking my Castle Arts watercolours at the moment, very much so. Hiya Dominique! So I'm just blending this out now with a bit more of that deco yellow. So you see it's just given it a slight purpley pinky tint there just to reflect the fact that we have got this this little curtain going on behind. Let me just put these all away properly so I don't have them rolling down the desk at me. And then of course we do have a little bit of um, Pentel. So if I show you the other side, hi Christine. You can just see we've given it just the smallest, smallest, that's not even a word, the smallest tin of a shimmer. Oh, I haven't been able to get my words out straight all day. I don't know quite what's the matter with me. <laughs> dear, oh dear. So some Pentel dual metallic gels. So this is the orange and metallic yellow and the gold. Morning, Shell. So I'm just going to dot a little bit of this on around the flame. And I'm going to do the same with the gold one. I'm just going to give this a bit of a bash on a piece of paper just to get it going. There we go. And I'll try desperately not to put my hand through this, but <laughs> it remains to be seen, doesn't it? Oh, Liz is remembering the ooh and ah. I know, sparkle time everyone. So you can just see it's just given it the smallest, smallest I nearly said smallest again. <laughs> the smallest little bit of glittery bling there. Ah, oh, Cheryl's struggling with COVID. I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, bless you. So much of it about at the moment, isn't there? So I'm going to do this little um, little pussycat here. So I'm going to put a little bit of a base down. I'm using warm greys for this one and black. So I'm going to put a base of 50% warm grey down first. Hi, UK. Welcome back to the live. I cannot currently get my words out straight, which I'll apologise for already. So let's just give this little dude a nice base layer of this grey. I don't like to just go in with black even though I'm wanting this guy to be um, a little black cat because it just looks a bit flat. It's nice to sort of build a little bit of grey into it as well. So I'm glazing this on so rather than tip down I'm holding the pencil to the side again and just using small circular movements with the pencil nice and lightly just to get a nice base over. Vaccinated and boosted, oh dear. One of my friends actually, um, who's vaccinated and boosted, just texted me a couple of days ago to say that she'd come down with it as well. I think that there's there's so much of it going around at the moment. It's, it's such a shame. Morning, Gail. But yeah, there's a lot of it about at the moment, isn't there? Let's carry on. Um, just glazing this down this little guy's tail as well. I was tormenting myself with what colour I was going to do this cat. I just could not decide. Um, I think it needed to be dark because the, there's so many sort of lighter bits of colour on here. It's a bit of 90% warm grey going on next. At least I can actually see the cat because I've got my specs on today. <laughs> Dear. So I'm just going to go from the base of this guy now. So I want him to have sort of like a, a lighter bit on the very top of his back here. So I'm not going to go too mad with this dark colour up top here. Um, I'm pressing a little harder towards the, um, the base of this guy. And I think I may use a little bit of gel pen or something on the tip of his tail. I feel like he needs to have like little white tips to his ears and little white tip to his tail as well. But yeah, have a think about what you want me to do. Gail, I'm glad you've popped in actually. I was going to ask. Um, I'm thinking about doing something maybe in Magical Jungle next. So am I still okay for my usual Sunday slot? 
that saved me sending a message because I've done two pages in uh, Romantic Country now and whilst I'm loving it a lot I kind of want to get back to my Johanna books I never want to see another lot of brickwork again by the way ever <laughs> until the next time I decide it's a good plan to do some <sighs> so let's carry on glazing this over down in here as well so I'm going to give him little white whiskers as well which we'll use that oh thank you Gail fantastic magical jungle yay so the page I'm thinking of um, and I don't know why this one is the one that's popped into my brain but the one I'm thinking of is the chameleon page I'm not sure why but that's the one that I'm toying with the idea of there we go let's just get those bits out so I'm going to whiz straight into this with some black I'm not going to show you the uh, Julie Perks Julie Perks you and I have definitely got bones to pick so those of you that are in this group which is obviously everyone who's here because you're you're watching me <laughs> will have seen um, another purchase unveiling itself over the last few days of a certain Harry Potter watercolour book now I fully blame Julie Perks for this purchase <laughs> totally reverse enabled me I was like whoa that looks good went on to um now nah, that's not going to work I need a pencil extender I'll just use the big one stop laughing I see you Julie so I went on to um YouTube to um have a little look at a flip through and thought oh that looks ace I've got to have that so promptly order it for myself and um then I see in the thread there's loads of other people that are like oh look at this book oh I've ordered that Oh, that's now in my wish list. I haven't even done anything in it yet. So, Julie, you've started this crescendo of purchasing <laughs> amongst everybody. And I have been reverse enabled. That's just ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I um, I think I looked at about two minutes of it. You have unleashed a monster. Because Amazon are like, knock, knock, knock. Catherine comes in. What's this? Oh, um, it's... It's nothing. It looks like a book to me. No, no, it's not a book. Are you sure? No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that prompted a whole conversation in, in this house. So, um, yeah. Julie, you have unleashed a monster. And several monsters, actually, in the group. Because everybody's buying it. Oh, Dominique's, Dominique says she's not a fan. <laughs> we have to have somebody who's not a fan, Dominique. So thank you for balancing it out. <laughs> So yeah, thoroughly enabled. But um, yeah, as Annie's just said, I know B&M have got Magical Jungle at the moment. So it um, might be worth having a little look in there and, uh, and bagging it for a fiver, which is great. So yeah, that's been a highly entertaining, uh, entertaining week for me. I think my mum's looked at it as well. So um, yeah, possibly unleashed more than one monster actually. <laughs> Right, so I'm just going to um, press a little harder now and do just some little curved lines just to sort of mimic the way that this little dude or dudess is sitting on the wall. And he's got three. Oh my God. What, three copies of Jungle? Or are we still talking about Harry Potter? <laughs> and Angela's doing the Locust page review ink tents. Ooh, that's one I haven't done yet, I don't think. But yeah, I'm toiling... Oh, I can't speak what is wrong with me toying with the idea of the chameleon page just feel that that's the one that I want to do got a bit of a plan for it as well I just need to decide if I'm doing it with um, ink tents or watercolours so yeah right let's just make this tail look nice and swishy now so we've got this base of grey down so I'm not going to just block colour this. I want to leave just a little hint of the grey showing underneath on this little guy. And I think we're going to have some white at the end of this tail. In fact, let me just grab, let's grab the 10% warm grey. And I'm just going to let me just show you that real quick. So the 10% warm grey. I'm just going to use that to 
grab the highlight on his back and to just back blend that sli slightly. Just give us a couple of lighter highlights on him. How cute is he? And the top of his head as well. And I'm just going to smooth over a bit more of this tail. And then just because this looks um, really, really nice over the top of black, I'm just going to pop a little bit of blue indigo on. What are we talking about here? Angela's up to 48. Hang on, let me just read back. Oh, we're on the ink tents. Sandra's got all 72. Angela's up to 48. And we're experimenting on the Locust page because you don't like it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that page either, actually. Um, which is probably why I've done absolutely enough all with it. But yeah, I, I do do that. Sometimes I'll experiment on uh, pages that are not necessarily my favourite. just a tiny little hint of this indigo blue. He's looking rather swish. So let's grab the white gel pen. Now I know that this guy's working because I've been using him earlier on. So if he suddenly stops working, I'm not going to be dead massively impressed. I'm just going to grab a sketchbook out just in case. So that I've got a spare bit of paper standing by. So this is a Uniball Signo um, and this one isn't the broad tip, this one's a slightly narrower tip. I'm hoping he's working. You better be working or you're going to be in deep doo-doo. He is working. My glare has wilted him. Oh, flipping heck. You were working beautifully earlier on. What has gotten into you? Here we go. So I'm just going to add little white tips onto this guy's ear. I'm going to go over the whiskers. And I think we'd probably have a little whisker coming this way as well, but it's not really on the image. So we'll, we'll add that on and then swizzle this around a little bit and let's give this guy some little bits of white fur. So sometimes with these white gel pens they can be go a bit heavier than you want them to but it's fine because once it's dry you can actually um, scratch it off with a sharp pencil anyway. So if this doesn't quite um, go in the right places I'm not going to be too worried. just want to make sure that I've painted the tip of his ears properly. Just cover that line art up. There we go. There we go. So one, one little pretty tat and one very badly behaved white pen. You're officially in disgrace again. <laughs> right, let me pop these greys away and then I'm going to show you how to do these flower buckets. So just, I don't want these ones out, so I'm just going to get a shot of them before they start rolling around the desk. So I'm not going to be using those for anything else. So these, this flower bucket, um, this effect around the outside of them. Oh, hey, Melissa, nice to see you. Did you see my puddy cat? Just show Melissa my puddy cat, because she has four fur babies. I'm sorry, I didn't do him ginger. I was thinking about it, but I figured possibly wouldn't. Yeah, it just wasn't quite right with the other, other colours. So what are you guys saying? Bad, bad pen. It's performance anxiety. It could be. I did have to sort of sit and talk it into getting itself into my pen pot earlier on. It was like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> right, so this is done with uh, acrylic paint pens. So what I have done is I've recycled the blues that we used last week um, for going over the top in Prismacolor. You'll remember we had three shades of blue. All I've done is reuse them for these buckets of flowers here and it's just a simple dark into light colour blend and then what I've done initially is drawn around the outside of these petals just in white pen because I don't want to lose the outlines with what I'm about to do. So I'm going to unzoom slightly. 
So the pens that I'm using, sorry for the glare, these are a set that Graby do. So I think there's something like 28 colours in here, including a couple of metallics, and the gold one is particularly delicious. So I've chosen two of the greens, and that those shades. I'm just gonna have to sit here and shake these for a little second, because you know what these are like. Yeah, definitely, Melissa, that's what I thought. Against the wall, if I did a ginger kitty, it wasn't really gonna work out. Um, I've kind of decided that we'd have like a black kitty with a tipped tail. I think I will re-go over those whiskers once it's dried because they're just not quite as bright as I would want them to be. So I'm going to go on with the darker of the two greens to start with, which is this one. And I'm going to be using a cotton bud or Q-tip, I think you guys in the States call these, just to um, sort of dab the paint as we go down. So you'll notice that I haven't done anything with these leaves here. That's because I'm going to be um, blobbing paint all over them. So there was absolutely no point. So I'm just going to again check this in case it's got a case of uh, performance anxiety. No, that one doesn't. So what we do with this is um, just work in tiny little dots and we're basically filling in the gap between these flowers and the brick wall that we can see behind. And we're just gonna let the paint go off slightly just for a few seconds before we introduce the Q-tip in. So in fact, I'm gonna do a little bit more blobbing. This is the technical term for it, we're blobbing onto here before I start to dab. So just a nice, plain, clean, cotton bud and we're not sploshing it down we're just literally tickling the top just to flatten it out slightly and this works much much better if you let the paint go off for a few seconds and then we continue so let's carry on covering up these pesky leaves so I, made, I didn't make a mistake as such, but I coloured these ones in and then kind of immediately wished I hadn't, so I left these guys blank. And then I'm just using the white outline with the gel pen just to sort of see where I'm going because we're going to re-outline that in a white acrylic paint pen. So just going to keep going. And this gives us a really nice contrast as well against the wall because they're such strong colours. So we carry on. Yeah, I totally agree, Shell. Um, I don't see the point in having a bucket of flowers that's got a million flowers in it and about 2.2 2 leaves. It just looks daft. So um, I also wanted some nice contrast between the back of the wall. Of course, you'll remember from when we did this that there's a lot of green in what I'd used so this just breaks it up a little bit. So the pots here, um, the same colours that we used on the stone steps, the roof tiles, exactly the same colours. So there's nothing new there and they're built up in exactly the same way. So if you're thinking, oh my God, she's done all of those paint pots, uh, oh God, Jesus, paint pots, Suzanne, you're talking a load of trash today. <laughs> all these flower pots um, and we don't know what we're doing just catch up on the previous videos because it's exactly the same technique exactly the same been in a general state of not being able to get my words out all week honestly don't know what has gotten into me honestly and the color palette that's on these flower pots down here is the same as that is on the front door and we're going to be doing some of that together momentarily. So let's just a little dab a thon. And we're going to be using this on the side of the grassy area as well to create the flower bed. So if we don't quite get time to do all of that today, you'll have seen um, how to do it here. So I'm actually just going to blob a bit of this down here as well because I just need to maybe balance this out. So we tweak as we go. Add just a tiny weeny bit more, 
and just carry on sort of blotting that down any wee gaps that you've got you can just go back and fill them in so you can see we've hidden those leaves that I hadn't coloured in with this instead which I think makes quite a nice um, a nice little effect really on here so of course you do your pot first don't do your um, flowery bits first that's right Elise we're dotting dotting and patting we'll call it we dot it on and pat it down so I'm going to let this dry for a second before we go on with the other green so what we'll do is we'll jump on to laying the colour down for this door so we've got Castle Arts watercolours again and the two colours that I've used is Magenta 86 and Chinese Orange 26. So just keep them then there for a little second. So we just have one slightly darker than the other. So laying this colour down, very simple two colour blend. So we're going on with the Magenta first, which is the darker of the two. What's the make of the pens? Um, they are Graby pens. Um, that's Graby with a B for Bertie, not V. Um, Graby. And they don't go through the page, no. They're very, very good. I can probably just about show you that there is absolutely no... So the bush I've just done is here on this page. And you can see there is absolutely no bleed through at all. But nice to see you, Maggie. So just carry on with this magenta. So just concentrating this basically down the edges of the door and the wood panels. There will be a little bit of Prismacolor over the top as well, just to smooth out. But we'll just get a very basic layer of this down first. So let's pop a bit of the darker colour into here as well. And then again, just concentrating this to the very edge of the shapes. I was contemplating making this like a wood effect door, but because there's wood effect everywhere, I just thought, nah, let's just go for a nicer warm coloured watercolour type thing and see how that looks. I think it looks pretty okay. So I have got the, the full set now of these Castle Arts watercolours, so the 120 colours, and I have to say, I'm particularly impressed with them. I much prefer them to the Arteza ones. Um, I find that they're nicely pigmented. You don't have to work too hard with them to get a decent amount of coverage. And they actually look nice even if you don't feel like tweaking them with ordinary pencil over the top. Quite impressed with them. So you, you'll know that I had the 72 set. Back to your picture now, Maggie. Happy colouring. I will no doubt speak to you again um, on Messenger over the next couple of days. Oh, thanks, Jeanette. That's sweet. <laughs> but yeah, these are really, really easy. Um, get a really nice coverage with them. Nice colour. Just looking really, really good. So I'm just going to see now how this is doing. Yep, we're dry, we're good to go. So I'm just going to give this other lighter one a little bit of a shake and just making sure that you pick up a new cotton bud or Q-tip for each colour that you use. So I'm just going to check this one for stage fright as well. No, you're not, you don't have stage fright, unlike my silly white gel pen. So what we're doing with this one is just adding um, a little bit of a lighter colour. So I'm not going to go over absolutely everywhere with this one just any little gaps that you can see between your flowers um, where you've still got bits of stonework showing that you don't want to have visible um, maybe to create a bit of a highlight on some of these outer areas and again we're just going to let this go off for a few seconds so we dot on and pat down so this middle bit will have um, gone off nicely now so I'm just going to pat those dots down nice and gently if it's still quite damp around the edge because I like the edge to be kind of sort of blurry and fuzzy looking so I am patting the edge bits a little bit harder than the inside areas like in here as well I'm just going to fill 
any of these little gaps in. There may be sort of more gaps than I want there to be, but it's hard to see under this um, this desk lamp that I've got going. It's about a million a million watts. <laughs> So we'll go down here as well. We'll have a, get a bit of overlap going on the bottom of this pot. And again, we just let it go off for a second or two. And then we just pat it down. And I want to just blur the edge of that a little bit. I don't want it looking all harsh. I'm going to go under here as well with this one. Just need to uh, hold the edge of this down because it's just gone a little bit wonky donkey from uh, the paint and things that I've been using. There we go. So same again. Nice and gently down here because I do want to make it blurry but I don't want to make it look all smudged and rot and horrible rotten looking. So we'll just go nice and steady with this. There we go. Beautiful. So once that's dried I will outline these guys with a white pen. So I'll come back to that in a minute and we will crack straight on with activating the door. So loads of little areas, um, little fiddly bits that all need to sort of dry up in between what I'm doing. So we are jumping around. I'm just gonna have a little sip of my juice. Oh, that's good. Oh, I felt that go all the way down. That's really cold. <laughs> So I keep looking at my phone. When you guys stop sort of chatting to me, I'm like, uh-oh, black screen of death time. I always say this every week. I don't know if I've stunned you into silence or... <laughs> so I'm just getting my uh, my water brush going. I ordered myself a new one of these um, this week from Colt Pens. And they have a really, really nice little touch of putting sweeties in with your order. So we got two packs of Swizzles Love Hearts. Haven't eaten them yet. That was a nice little touch. Julie and Dominic still here. So Cheryl's got three books coming and this is one of them. Oh, fantastic. What are the other two that are coming? Is that the Harry Potter thing again? So as with all the other um, watercolours, we activate from light into dark. So I'm going to start smack bang in the middle of this door panel and nice little circles and then we just push everything up into the corners any sort of excess pigment like that little bit there we just take it off the tip of the brush on a bit of kitchen paper so, so Josephine's taking it all in oh, bless you thank you Sandra's right in the steps for your planters so um I mean I've only ever had a um, black no, I'm telling you lies. I did have a set, I think, of about eight different colours of Posca. I have to say, I do find um, these gravy ones to be a little better performing than Posca. I may just have had a bad set that didn't work particularly well, but I do find these are a little bit more reliable. The white one is behaving like a bit of a plank, which you'll probably see shortly when I go to re-outline the flowers. Um, it was not making for restful watching of the Winter Olympics about an hour ago because I was uh, loudly cursing at my pen while we were watching uh, the skiing. So we've watched figure skating today, we've watched um, curling, we've watched some of the luge and we've watched some of the moguls quite insane um that is the moguls and that must be murder on their knees but all the all the while i've been finishing this other page in this book because i'm desperate to get on to something else <laughs> how bad is that so same with this one we've got such a little space to work here i'm not going to worry too much about where the pigment's landing on these because we can tweak this with the pencils anyway let, would, let's just Get it all activated and get it drying and then we can move on to the next bit so dominique's just watched some women's figure skating i love this the figure skating it's my absolute favorite we haven't been able to find the pairs though i'm not sure what's going on or whether they're just showing it back to front but we keep seeing the women's short um what do you call it not display short program i think they call it we keep seeing that over and over again, so I'm hoping we're going to get some more of the figure skating coming up quite soon. 
yeah I'm looking forward to the bobsleigh as well yes I just say Jeanette your second set of the golds are working that's really good because you had quite a mare with the first set didn't you that was not fun not fun for all concerned honestly it should not be that difficult trying to uh, organise replacements of something that's faulty so I must admit I was slightly worried when my set of uh, watercolours arrived in case I had a fault with them and had to send them back after the experience that you had but um, luckily touch wood they've been absolutely grand. So again tiny tiny areas down here so I'm just going to get it activated and then we can tweak with ordinary pencil. So just in areas where I've got slightly too much of the pigment I'm just wiping my brush on a piece of kitchen paper. There we go. So Angela, hi Angela, don't worry, you're not late. We're we're just hanging out. So this will be available um, for anybody who can't stay or is having to sort of disappear off or whatever. This will be available on YouTube later on. And then um, yeah, so next project I am thinking magical jungle, I am thinking chameleon. And I have, I have half a plan, as usual, and it does involve ink tents or watercolours again. Did I get them directly? I did, um, and they arrived in a box pretty much the size of a small suitcase, luckily quite securely, but the box was gigantic compared to the size of the tin that landed, so I'm not quite sure what that was all about, but yeah, huge box. Whee. So, while that's drying up, Let's get some of the base layers on for this grass. So this is really, really straightforward. Um, the greens that we are going to use, let me just whip them out of my pencil case. And you, and you. Because I know some of you are making notes and things. So we have some Prussian green. So I've got a little dude in a pencil extender, so I've whipped the new one out of my pencil case to show you instead. We have some apple green as well, well used with writing coming off the sides. We have some chartreuse as well. And we have some lime peel. Looks complicated, says Hannah. I promise you it's not. It's easy, easy peasy. You'll see how easy it is. Just going to get this pad and acrylic paint pen out of the way before I stick my arm through it. Oh, and there may be a bit of marine green for some shadows as well. But I'm just going to get him out of the way. So the colour that we want first is the lime peel. So don't worry about this being nice and sharp. It doesn't need to be sharp. What you may or may not be able to pick up there is if I show you a newly sharpened pencil you'll see that we've got loads of chisel shapes on this tip and this is from using the pencil with that glazing motion rather than actual proper shading. So I'm just going to get this on the side slightly and just carry on with some of these layers. So we're using linear pencil strokes again. So it's just about deciding where some of our shadowy areas and things are going to be. So to start with, I am going to just block colour this area with the lime peel. Because this is going to be quite dark up here. And then we're just going to start putting in any hints of where we would want there to be shadows so you will see me dotting about um, on here. I like to sort of see where I'm going as I get there if that makes sense so I like to sort of work areas I like to sort of work areas into each other so just being a bit careful because I don't really want this duck to have a green beak. So I am leaving areas of white so there'll be more pressure in some areas where I want more of these lines and then less pressure as we go further down the page. Let me just get these gravy pens out of the way. 
so that I can squeak my book up a bit higher. So I'm going to come down the way down here now. So I've already plotted in the start of a line here. So I'm just going to carry this on to sort of meet up here. And then again, I'm going to go straight into where I know I'm going to have darker areas. So I am rotating the pencil at times, but I'm predominantly just using the same flat surface. So let's get some shadow lines coming out from, from the duck as well. And then I'm going to switch grips. So I'm holding the pencil quite near the end. So if I was doing lots of detailed work, you'd see me doing this. When we're glazing, we'll hold the pencil quite flat really, further towards the top of the pencil, keep it steady in your hand and glaze from side to side. So I've just changed to a much lighter pressure and I'm just gently glazing this over in areas where I want there to be some of this lime green but I don't want it to be quite as pronounced. Still leaving areas of white and I'm just going to switch grips so slightly um, nearer the tip again just to pick up some of these darker areas again and just being careful to not drag any of this black pigment off the edge of the, the wall into this grassy area. And again I'm going to carry on just glazing over the top so I've just changed my grip again so I'm holding the pencil quite quite at the end again and we're just on the edge and just gently glazing over. So still got quite a bit of white paper showing through there which is just what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and build these greens. So you should see the basis forming of how I've worked this side. So we're going to go in now with our lightest green which is the chartreuse so 989 chartreuse and again we're going to be glazing so I'm going to be holding this quite flat and at the end of the pencil again and in these areas where we've left quite a bit of the white page showing through I'm just going to go ahead and glaze this colour into them again just minding this little dude's beak because we don't want a green beak. So same here up against his chest. So nice and slow. And just glazing this into the white of the paper that you've left. You can just see a little bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to use little circles just to nudge that up against the side of his little face there. And the same again around his feet. And then I'm going to take this all the way down to the bottom of the page. And here where we've got quite a bit of blank space, I'm just going to glaze that in. I can't quite remember if I've done this in this little corner, so I don't think I have from looking at the uh, looking at the colour down here. So I'll just push this in into here as well. There we go. So again, you should see it's starting to look more like this side again. So we're going to go ahead now and start to add in some of the darker green, which would be this Prussian green. How many hours? Oh my God, I don't know. Um, too many, I think. <laughs> Especially on the brickwork. I never want to see brickwork again in my life until the next time I decide that doing brickwork is something I really feel the need to do. <laughs> But yeah, loads and loads of hours. Let me just sort my nose out so that I'm not sniffing in your ear rolls while we're doing this. Oh, dear me. Do excuse me. Morning, Gina. That's better. <clears throat> so, Prussian Green. Again, my, my little one is quite well used. So I'm going to do exactly the same again, but this time we're plotting out where we've got the darker areas. So... In here, I'm going to go ahead and just layer this in because we are going to be wanting 
darker areas in here. I'm just going to change to little circles just around the base because I just want to graduate this. I don't want this to be linear going up the tree because we're going to have some little spiky bits of grass and, and stuff anyway. And then under this step, we'll just carry on pulling that shadow line across. And then I'll come into the side of the, the bushes again. So same shading motion. Nice and gently. So we had a bit of a line coming through here. So let's just pick that up so it looks as though it's continuing on. Again, just minding this guy's beak. And again, I'm going to just pick out areas. So I'm going to come in down here again. So some of this is going to be covered over with um, the acrylic paint pens and things. So I'm not going to go sort of too mad. So who's having birthdays? Have I missed a comment? So Shell's birthday is the 10th. Who are we saying happy birthday to for next week? I've missed that. It's because I'm so busy blethering at you while I'm doing this. So I'm just going to shade in under here. And then I'm going to move this down. Oh, it's Jeanette's. Happy birthday for next week. So I'm just going to add this darker green in around the bottom of this um, bush down here and this is possibly going to be a little bit um, tricky underneath this guy just be a bit careful again so I want a bit of sort of darker darker shadow under that pot and then again here as well just pull that shadowing across carry that on underneath his little feet and then let's go under this guy's under this guy's bottom here it's going nice and gently and under his little foot so sort of shading it in to start with and then just pulling that shading out then into the the linear features that we've got going and let's dig into this area here as well, under this wall and around this pot. So we've got a sort of darker area coming through here as well, which I'm just going to pick up. So quite often I will work sort of from side to side um, a little bit so I can just sort of sit down and uh, sit back, sorry, and just look at what I'm doing. I just want to fill in gap here and then I'm going to blend some of this out now and that is where the apple green comes in so apple green sits really nicely in between the Prussian green and the lime peel it's kind of a mid-range mid-tone green works really nicely with the chartreuse as well because it's a, a sort of a green that's on the yellow spectrum really rather than the the blue spectrum of greens so let's work it from the top down to the bottom so still using that sideways glazing motion and i'm just integrating this prussian green a little bit more into the colors that are underneath so we're sort of blending either side of it just softening those lines up a little bit so that it doesn't sort of all look as stripey as it was looking. And then we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to do the white bit around these flowers so that I can show you what I did with that. And then we will um, possibly do the door and then crack on with the, the rest of this lawn. Just so many little areas that need to dry in between what I'm showing you. <laughs> I was thinking earlier, oh my god, which bit am I going to do first? I'm going to be dragging my hand through everything. This is not going to be good, but I really need to get this lawn down or I'm not going to be able to show you how to do the flower bed. So let's just move this down. So let's just move this around this little guy. 
and I can see from this side I've pulled this apple green quite away down to the bottom so I'm just going to pressure shade a little more down here and then I'm going to start working from this side out again and just bring this all the way up to this little duck and then we've got a bit of a gap in here so again we'll just shade in some of the blanks little area around this guy's tummy <laughs> so I'm just going to sit back and have a little look at this now so I can see probably want a bit more lime peel in there because it's not quite looking even so I'm going to switch back to the lime peel pencil and just re-add some of this so again just pressure shading over not necessarily matching it to the same the other side but we just want it to be a nice even spread of the different greens so a little more of the lime peel down here. Let's have a look. So just going to go back to the Prussian green and just be a little bit more specific with where I'm putting my pencil strokes. So just want some sort of darker lines in here as well. And then we're going to use a bit of that marine green to just shadow around. The, uh, the edges of the foliage and what have you and up here as well and we're going to keep the Prussian green in our hand anyway to do the grass with so we just grab the marine green where have you gone there it is so very tiny marine green and all I'm going to do with this chap is just change colours around where we would have some more sort of shadow at the base of this wall around this pot. So this one is um, sort of more of a olivey browny green so it gives a nice contrast of, uh, of colour against the ones that we've already used especially for some of these shadow areas that we're going to put in. So just taper that off slightly and we'll have a quite a bit of it in here because this is quite quite dark under here and in this one as well and then we'll just pop a little bit of uh, a little bit of shadowing in this corner under here as well leave in today I'll take care nice to see you Liz thanks for popping in I'm just going to bring this um, into the side here as well, carry this shadowing on underneath the step and to the side. So it shall go in as well. Take care guys, hope you feel better soon. And then let's start having a little look at the grass. So back to the Prussian green. Oh, Liz is still here. Right, who's going? I'm, it's because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and I'm <laughs> missing all the comments. Oh, dear. So, I'm just going to add in some little tufts of grass at the bottom of this tree. And Shell's still here as well. Well, whoever it was I didn't say goodbye to, I'm really sorry. And um, hello to everyone who's still here. Who I did say goodbye to. <laughs> Dear Lord. One of them days. Look how tiny this guy is now. It's almost to the point of not being usable. But we're going to persevere. So what I've done is. Where we've got this little line. Um, I've used that to add in some tufts of grass. Around the outside. So you want a nice sharp pencil for this. And what I'm doing is, oh no, look at that. Uh, I could, oh, nuts. Right, you, you are retired officially. Let's sharpen up your big brother. Because if it's gone like that on that sharpen, we're not gonna get anywhere. So let me just stir. Sharpen the brand new one. There we go. 
honestly. Just make sure the new one's going to play. Yes, the new one's okay. Did you also get the hot flashes? Right, I'm going to have to scroll back because I'm not sure what we're talking about here. Hot flashes. I'm not sure what I've missed. <laughs> not sure what I've missed. I'm just going to carry on. Right, so with this one, what you do to get the blades of grass is you just push harder at the base of the blade and let the pencil sort of taper off. So we're going to do them in different directions, different heights. Oh, hey, Bev. Oh, you're talking about COVID symptoms. What, you get hot flushes with COVID symptoms? That's rough, isn't it? Dear. So I'm going to do some. So I'm going to add some in the marine green as well. So I jump about quite a bit as you can see. Um, Bev's in capitals. I'm so happy when you're in capitals. It just it feels odd when you appear and you're not in capitals. <laughs> so lots of different directions. Lots of little blades of grass. And then what we're going to do is flip over to the marine green, which is just a nice sort of darker colour. It just gives us a little bit of contrast. And then what we do is we can make like little, almost like little flowers out of these. Not quite sharp enough. Little pencil. Just make sure that you are behaving. Yes, you are. I'm just going to add, oh, flipping out and tips just flown off as you can see. <laughs> Blown pencil. Right, let's just pop in a couple of the darker ones down here at the base of this tree as well. And then get rid of all these bits. So I'm gonna outline, outline the pot of flowers, do the door, do the flower bed, do the duck. So we're getting there, we're getting there. So let me just get this lot out of the way. That little Prussian green is in disgrace and will be going in the bin. So back to this. So you remember me saying at the start that I'd outlined um, the edge of this in a white gel pen. So what I'm going to do is use the um, gravy white pen, which I will need to get going again, just to outline it. What we're talking about now, battery operated sharpeners. I've never tried the battery operated ones. I'm always worried that they're going to completely eat my pencils. I don't know, they probably don't, but yeah, I don't know. Now this pen is going to need a lot of encouragement because it was behaving like an absolute planker um, earlier on this afternoon. I was totally not happy. Oh, can't get the lid off it now. Come on, off you pop very well used you can see it's got a bit of a manky tip on it actually but let's just get this guy going so I'm just cleaning the edge off so it's already covered in a load of green from a project I was doing this afternoon so I'm just going to get the um, the tip of this cleaned off and make sure that it's actually just coming out white which it is now and then I'm just going to use it hope she says nope you're still not playing it took a few goes to get this thing going earlier on as well come on you dafty that feels better there we go so i'm just going to use this to re-outline the edge of these flowers so you can see where the white gel pen was so it gives you a bit of a guideline to follow so I'll do these ones on this side now as well so these are quite nice um, moist pens really good paint flow when they're not 
plain silly beggars with you. And you just need to make sure that your green is nice and dry when you get to this stage, otherwise you're going to have um, sort of a mint, a spearmint green mess as you smudge the colours together. But I was sort of trying to think of how I could make these flowers stand out against that stone wall and this is what I came up with. She'd have been on a cruise. Oh, Shell, what a pain. Oh dear, that is ironic. But at least you've got it and you'll have had it, so you're going to build yourself up some fantastic antibodies to go with your vaccine antibodies because they do say the best ones that you can build up are when you've actually succumbed and you've caught it. That's me just trying to glean a positive out of it um not that you'll be feeling massively positive about feeling so poorly at the moment bless you so let's carry on just outlining these so i've still got some nice paint flow coming through here there we go and we'll just do the last one so any of these little gaps where you haven't quite sort of got the green paint in or whatever, you do tend to sort of fill them in at this stage anyway, when you're re-outlining the petals. And then what you can do as well is just add some little bits of white into the foliage just to break things up a little bit. Worse ways to spend time. <laughs> There we go. And while I've got the ink flowing on this thing, I'm just going to go um, back to Mr. Pussycat up here because I just think that um, this is going to flow a bit better. So I'm just going to make doubly sure that I haven't picked any green up, actually. Make sure that this pen is still flowing beautifully, which it is. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and re-outline this little guy's ear and his whiskers and let's add a little bit more white at the tip of his tail here that's Catherine with the coffee machine on wonderful there we go so just re-outline that let that dry off and then um, what I'll probably do is just tweak in, to, in between that with the black pencil because I do want the white tip, I just don't want quite as much as that but it needs to be dry before you tweak about with it. Okay, let's do the door and then we'll do the, or should we do this first because then this can be dry and while I do that, yeah. Back to the green guys. Mocha time, <laughs> this is <chilly. laughs> I don't know what I'll get actually, I think, what did I have this morning? I had salted caramel this morning, I think. The cat looks like your lily, um, says Angela, does it? <laughs> oh. Hello. What have I got? Chai. Chai, thank you. I have got a mat. Okay, there you go. Right. I've got it, thank you. Yeah. We've only got one order for coffee today and it's duly um, about mockers. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> just the one. Just and Porsche, nice and easy. And poor Shell's got COVID, bless her. Mm. Not good. Mm. Oh, that's good, thank you. Okay. Okie dokes, let's ca carry on cracking on. So, back to the green again. Oh, Annie, she's gone. <laughs> Annie says hi. <laughs> she's gone back in the kitchen. <laughs> bless her. So, what we're going to do is this... Um, Annie says hi. Hello. <laughs> Let's do this flower bed type thing down here, which is done in exactly the same way as we did the um, foliage in the pots. So I'm going to just dot this on. So I'm going to cover over the um, the base of this, this bush down here. So this takes quite a bit of dotting, so I'm hoping that we'll have, well, where are we, five past. So I'm not actually doing horrendously badly. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, we let this go off a little bit. Oh, Liz, she's, um, she's bogged back off into the kitchen, bless her. She didn't sleep well um, last night for whatever reason, so she's um, been upstairs having a bit of a lie down. 
bless her, it's rotten when you've not had a decent night's sleep. So we dot on and then pat the paint gently. Just gonna keep this going. So this can be um, quite laborious doing this, but um, I didn't wanna just color this bit in brown. Um, I thought, no, I'm just gonna make it like a, like a little bit of a, I don't know, flower beddy type thing, but without the brown bits. You know when you see a bit on an image and you're thinking, what the devil am I going to do with that? Well, that was what was happening to me when I saw this little bit of uh, this little bit of the image. But I am liking this sort of mixed media page. I don't know how you, those of you that are following it, I don't know how you're finding it. Whether you prefer um, these kind of uh, tutorials where we're using mixed media or or what, you'll have to let me know. So what's Angela saying? Is she still doing a model building? Yes, she is. So she's finished um, her HMCS Snowberry and she's just given herself a little bit of a break because I think she's going to start her fire truck next. What kind of paint pens, says Barbara, and how do you spell them? I will show you. Let me just write it down and then I can put it under the camera. Gravy. They are gravy paints. I've just put my thumb in the wet white bits. Gross. Ugh. Blah. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Right, let's carry on. So, but yeah, back to the model building tale. So, I think she's going to start her fire truck next. Um, but she's just given herself a bit of a break because this um, snowberry boat that she did was the hardest one that she's ever done. Oh, Jan has just ordered them. Excellent. And um, we actually did a bit of uh, building ourselves this week. So, um, God, she's got these models everywhere. Um, and we've sort of been looking for ages for a display cabinet or something to put them in. So when she was browsing on Amazon um, last weekend, actually, after I'd been on here, she found this um, like oak display cabinet. I think it's meant to be for DVDs or... I don't even know if people have DVDs because it's all digital streaming, but whatever. She found this cabinet, so um, and it was on Amazon, so I ordered it, and it arrived on Tuesday. And so started the absolute joke that was us trying to flat pack. So normally, we're pretty good, pretty on our game. Um, this week, forget it. So, oh, just awful. So we've got the sides um, and the top and the bottom and everything on. And then you ha it's one of those ones where you have the back of it that you have to tack on. So it's like, make sure you get it square. Put your four corners on first and make sure it's nice and square, blah, 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 blah. So we put it in the dressing room, which is the room that Catherine actually works in. Lay it on the floor. There was about a foot's worth of space. Um, either side of where we were so you couldn't really get around it and it was nice and square so we hammered the damn tacks in and um, realised then that it was skew if could we get the tacks out and she had to go and rummage in the shed in the bottom of her big toolbox to find these pincer things I managed to get two of them out and pretty much flung myself down the stairs with the second one Catherine managed to get the other ones out and by the time we'd finished it we were both absolutely sick to the back teeth of, uh, of cabinets but now it's up she's got all her planes and all her ships and everything displayed in there and it looks really really good but honestly at the time I'm getting too old to be uh, crawling around on the floor trying to hammer nails into things it's, it's not a good situation to be in <laughs> right let's do the door while that layer of green is drying so, Prisma colour, but yeah, what a nightmare. I was not the flat pack queen at all on Tuesday, not remotely, and it involved a sense of humour leak. <laughs> really bad. So, Nectar and Henna, and possibly a little bit of Tuscan Red. So, the Henna is the darker of the two. Four-sided glass cabinet from Ikea yeah this this was an Amazon job and actually it should have been a really simple build and it was a simple build 
until we hadn't got it like square we thought we'd got it square then there was like a half an hour debate over well my side's overlapping a bit well, well now so is mine you've shoved that end and now you've made my end wonky you imagine how it went but it's looking pretty good i might see if she will let me take a photograph later on and i'll put it up in group so that you can see her models but i love flat packs um or used to love flat packs this one did not like me <laughs> at all really bad is that right that's how not to tack a back onto a cabinet honestly i think because we were doing it in a space that was entirely too small for what we were trying to do which didn't help and let's note to self is build it in a space where you've got enough room to actually maneuver your person around the object that you're building so i'm just glazing gently over the watercolor layer i don't want this to be all smooth so that it just looks like all it's got on it is is pencil um i quite like the watercolor effect and the fact that it's nice and weathered that to me to you it pretty much was it was if this was the cabinet it was like me going and her going well my end's not square now right okay now my end's not square that was terrible <laughs> oh dear do you ever just leave the watercolors yeah i do um oh look at that your little tinker you know about to break let's see if we can get away with using it this way around yeah i do sometimes leave them um because this is so small and I had, didn't have a lot of room to sort of move the pigments around as I wanted them to, I do feel this merits a bit of tweaking. But yes, if I'm happy with the effect that I've got with them, I will just leave them alone. And I like the fact that this looks quite weathered because it is a front door. So I'm just going to do um, the sort of side, the side shading. So just using a little bit of sepia on here. And all I'm doing with this is just going down the edge of the frame. Just to darken that in very slightly. So just areas where you haven't quite got the watercolour into. And you just darken the edges very slightly and under here. And we'll have a bit of a darker corner down here as well. And in that corner and up in this corner beautiful oh i don't know why my nose is so sniffy today i hope i'm not getting a cold <clears throat> so i'm just going to go in for the next layer on the flower bed so this is just the lighter green that i was using again just making sure i've got the right q-tip and again we are just in this about just to break up the the darker green just to fill in some of those gaps as well so just let it go off for a few seconds so dot it on pat it down and we'll do the wee duck and then i think we're about actually about there I want to say thank goodness because I feel this page has been uh, has been dragging on for a few weeks now. Um, I have come to the conclusion when I'm doing whole page colour alongs with you guys though I really can't go any faster than I am going with them. It has to be at this pace. Um, I think because a lot of it is real time colouring as well rather than just uploading tutorials um, that are already done. At least well, I'd like to think that that improves your learning experience anyway. So let's just do a bit of paint patting. There we go. And then I'm just going to feather this darker edge with a little bit of this lighter green. Just so it's not quite such a harsh blend line. And then I'm using a couple of other colours of the gravy paint pens just to create um, little flowers. So we just need to make sure that that's nice and dry before we go ahead and do that. I'm just going to have a little mouthful of my coffee. So you can see the flower bed on this side. And all I've done is choose colours that mirror what we've already got in the picture in other places. So blue, purple and pink. Oh, oh that 
that's so nice. So these pens, let me just find them. Oh, where's the blue one gone? There it is. So I'm give these a shake just to get them activated and then let's have a little look at this duck. Let me get this little guy out of the way. Oh, thanks, Shell. But yes, I do think it helps um, watching real time for sure. But what I do like to do as well is do other little bits where, um, you know, like for example, like we did with the roof. So I only left this little section here and that was what I demonstrated knowing full well that you guys would then have to go and do this and also this bit all by yourself and I think that that's a really good way to cement your learning because if you've watched me do this bit and you've done it yourself then you can recreate it in two other places that help that helps me learn so I hope it helps you guys learn as well and doesn't feel like I'm just torturing you <laughs> recreational torture she's showing us half the story Right, let me just um, get some of these pencils slotted back in to the pencil case. And I'm just going to whip out the ones that I need for this little chappy here. So we have some beige, another well used one. So 997 beige. And I do have another new one of those on the go as well. We have some cream. And then we have some burnt ochre. So burnt ochre, cream and beige. So I'm gonna go on with the beige first. So let's just pop a little layer of this down. So his tummy is gonna to be lighter. And I just wanted sort of a very, that's a bit of green in there. I was so careful as well, you know, when you just see something, you just get rid of that because I really don't want green on this duck. How annoying. I think that's just about got it. And he's got a bit on his butt as well. There we go. Don't want a green back or a green butt. It's not a good look, is it? Right, back to the beige. Yeah, I wanted something quite neutral, really, um, for this little chap. I quite like using sort of these nice cream shades together. So I'm just going to put a nice, a nice coating of this down, down his back. Honestly, let me see, what's Julie saying? My, I'm not buying any art supplies since Feb in February has failed by the 6th. Right, what have you ordered? Have I missed something or are we still talking about this Harry Potter book? Um, where you actually corrupted half of the Facebook group, I have to say. <laughs> Myself included. <laughs> so how am I going to explain this? You've got another book. Haven't you been sent half an Amazon store by your followers for your birthday? Well, yes, I have, but, but this bit is... Uh, I've just got an indulgent roll of the eyes. <laughs> right, same with this, this little head. So let's just pop little bit of the beige around here. Payback time. It's not payback time. That's unreasonable. <laughs> it might be true, but it's unreasonable. <laughs> so funny. But my mum, by the way, when I put that comment on about um, you've reverse enabled me, she absolutely piddled herself laughing. And um, when we FaceTimed her the other night, she said, oh my God, I literally was nearly sick laughing when I saw your comment about... Um, that Julia's reverse enabled you to order this book. It's like, yeah, thanks for that. I've told you that you need magical jungle. Well, you do. I need magical jungle in your life. How can you not have it? <laughs> so this is the cream I've switched over to. So I'm just gonna blend this up into the beige layer and just around the rest of this little guy. It's made you giggle all week. I'm happy to have amused you. <laughs> It's made me laugh as well. <laughs> uh, honestly. I'm trying to think of something else I ordered the other day. What was it? That's going to do my nut in. I can't... Oh, it's the um, the water brush. So that doesn't count because I actually need a new one because the push button's going dodge on this one. So, 
you're on a ban says Dominique oh dear I think I've been on a ban for years I don't listen though <laughs> but yeah we'll go in for some uh, some magical jungle action next I've actually got a, a plan for a page in worlds for wonder but that's going to be one I think that I'm doing I'm doing with myself if that makes sense because it's something I haven't attempted before so I don't want to try and teach something I'm not sure how it's going to work out so a little bit of um burn ochre so I'm just going to use this um, really, really gently over the top of that beige. I'm just going to add a little whistle of darker colour on this little guy. And I am literally just um, tickling the back of the duck with this pencil. I'm not pushing hard at all. So we will blend this out again with the beige anyway. It's not going for a feathery effect or, you know, messing about with this, this little guy. I just wanted something nice and neutral. So I'm going to leave under here because that's his, his tail underneath. So I think that should be quite light under there. I'm just going to put a little whistle of this under his wing. And then I'm going to use the beige again just to blend this back out. So just little circles over the top, a little harder pressure just to smooth this all out and it just takes away these edges. Just brush these bits away. Just soften all these edges out now with the beige. And then I am going to just add a slightly darker line down the very back of him as well. It's kind of hugging the line art really on this one. Just blend out under his wing as well. And I may just glaze the smallest little bit on under here too. And then I'm going to just switch over to the cream just to blend that out. And then for his eye. So what I did with the other one, I'm um, just wondering if I can. I've got so many pencils that are almost beyond saving now because they're so teeny weeny. That one's OK. Let's just grab a sip of coffee before I do his eyeball. Mm. Nom, nom, nom. And I need the orange as well for his little beak. So with this black, I'm just going to go over his eye and then just bring a little line backwards. So a little bit like, like a speech mark apostrophe type thing shape is what we're going for. And then I'm just going to use the black just to outline this line art because it's quite pale. Now that we've finished messing about with all this green, I'll just line his little wing as well. This really should be in a pencil extender, but. I really can't be bothered to dig one out, so I'm just going to go with it. And down here as well. There we go. And then his little beak and his foot. Whoops. I've just used a bit of yellowed orange for... It's just to give this a bit of a sharpen. There we go. So... Just do his little foot as well. In fact, let's not come out massively uh, bright on the other side of that. And then with the black, I'm just going to line the top of his beak. There we go. So I may pop um, a little bit of a white dot on 
there actually. Let's see if the old I've got stage fright contender is going to work for me. And where have I put it? There it is. Right, stop being ridiculous, honestly. Brand new pen. I shouldn't have to have these conversations every time I want to use you. This is a ridiculous. There we go. Pull yourself together, seriously. Right, let's just put a tiny little white dot. So that was really worth the effort getting that to work, just for that small area. <laughs> and then we'll do the flower bed, and then we are done. So I'll get these um, little shakes, get these going. So what I've done with this is I've just picked out colours that we've already been using. So it's my way of bringing the purple curtains, um, the pink that's in the middle, the blue of the sky into other areas of the picture. So I'm going to unzoom us slightly here now. So let's just go with whatever. So I'm not going to be doing any patting down or anything with this. This is literally just going to be dotting on so we just go ahead and well, I think I did pat down very slightly as they were almost dry so I don't know we'll see how they look so we're just sort of rough rough circular shapes and then we'll just grab the odd little bit on these grass pieces as well so they look like flowers and then we'll go for the purple. And we'll just dot these on again. And again, I'll just pop a couple. Let's add a couple up here as well, around the bottom of the tree. Grab the blue, let's pop a couple of blue flowers up here at the bottom of the tree. I think I did do a little bit of, uh, although they're pretty much dry now, no, I, can't, I don't think it needs it, I'm just going to let them dry as they are, so keep adding some blue ones in. This just brings in the other colours that have been used in other places and then we will go, dare I risk using this silly pen again, let's see, oh no you are going to cooperate, so just add a couple of little bits of the white in as well, you know particularly um, you know, in places where you've got this grass and things it looks quite, quite nice. If I ever finished a colouring book, I have not, no, I have not. I would really like to finish Worlds of Wonder. That is a big kind of um, sort of goal, because I really do love that book. But no, I've, I have never, ever finished one. So I'm just going to be really careful and just swizzle this round in the hopes that I'm going to keep my uh, arm out of the way of this. I've just noticed that I've got more white on the other side than I've got on this side, so let's just go a bit more mad with the the white otherwise it's not going to look even just get a few more little bits and bobs going there we go and then what i am going to do is with the light green pen now that i've plotted out where the flowers are i'm just going to add some little areas of the lighter green colour in. So it's a similar technique to what I did with the uh, flower pot. It's just for kind of splitting up when and how we're putting the greens on. It just adds a bit of lightness in between all these dark patches. Let's just get a bit more at the edges here as well. There we go. And then I'm just going to tweak 
this little guy's tail. So let's just get these paint pens and uh, things out of the way. And I'm going to have to bring it round on an angle here so I'm not sticking my arm through everything that's already wet. That should be okay now. So I'm just going to go into this with a really sharp pencil. And then I'll just brush those bits away so we can see what we're doing. Just to break up the end here. Just want to make that bit a little bit thinner so that looks a bit more like a tail rather than a big blob of uh, pen there we go I'm just gonna deepen those uh, black lines around the base of this little guy and as well let's just go up into his ear a little bit go. I want to go da da. Let's unzoom. See, let's just see if uh, I don't think I can unzoom any more than that actually. No, that's your lot. So there we go. Um, this little sign um, that I haven't done on screen, that's just got a base of cream and beige. So beige around the edge, cream in the middle to blend and then I've used one of the blue pencils that we used off the sky just to outline it. Let me just get this out of the way. So yeah, there we go. One finished page. So that is it from top to bottom. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. I'm hoping I'll see some more of you having a little go at this and posting the, your results. I do love seeing what other people are doing when they're having a go at the pages that I cover. It is what keeps me going. So I'm looking forward to more updates from those of you that I know are already working on it. I'll give you a little sneaky peek of the page I've finished, which I haven't posted on social media yet, but I will be doing before close of play this evening. So this is the other one. I've just finished this afternoon. I just keep a tight hold of this one. So this is the village patisserie. So on here, same colour scheme as the stones, same base, same stonework, same technique with the flower trough. Um, so bits of this page you would be able to do as well, but I obviously haven't covered this one. So full credit for this woodwork to Chris Cheng. So that owl tutorial that you guys watched me do uh, a few weeks ago, you saw the page posted. This is her woodwork, this is not my woodwork. So I've used her colour scheme from the door and I've reused it on this one, which is looking quite good. And as you can see, there is a decent amount of sparkle pen all over this page. So yeah, that's what I finished that just this afternoon while I was watching the Olympics. Couldn't decide what to do with the curtain, I wanted it plain, so I've just added some cream lines and stuff. But I'm quite pleased with that, so we'll be posting that up a little bit later on. Photographed it. So yeah, thanks for joining me on this one. Like I've said, Magical Jungle, I'm thinking, will be the next uh, project for us. As well as I will be carrying on with my Robin that I've been doing as well. So keep an eye out for that over the next week or so. So it's like a page for me, a page for you guys, and a work in progress from other, other places as well. So... Yeah, thanks for sticking with me over the last month while we've done this. I'm so sorry it's dragged on. I think I can't do them any quicker than this. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed it. So um, Gail's given me the nod to carry on with my Sunday slot over in the big group. So all being well, next week, Sunday, I will have a plan in my brain for the chameleon page in Magical Jungle. So if you don't have a copy of that book, please do feel unable to go and purchase yourself one. <laughs> And I'm mainly speaking to you, Julie Perks. <laughs> but 
but yeah feel better soon shell happy birthday to everybody else who says they've got birthdays coming up in the next few days happy birthday Jeanette I'm so sorry I can't remember the other lady's birthday was it Josephine I can't remember I'm so sorry but yeah I will see you all next week Sunday I may jump on and do something tomorrow on Instagram I don't know if I do I'm not sure what I'm gonna do so just keep an eye out I was fully intending to be on on Monday this week, but after the day at work I had and the head I'd got, it was not going to happen. So <laughs> wish me a better day at work tomorrow, guys. So I'm going to love yous and leave yous now. You take super good care. Feel better soon, Shell. Big cuddles, big hugs. And I will see you guys again very, very soon. So out we come. Ooh. I'll give you a last little look. Last little look at the page. There we go. And it is bye from me. Bye for now, guys.